So I wanted to talk about, you know, some of those exploits, if you will. Um, you know, as we mentioned numerous times so far, 2021 saw, I think it was 53 of these vulnerabilities that at least Google discovered. And I know there were at least a handful, maybe even more of, you know, rather devastating attacks. So what were like one or two of the most devastating, uh, more impactful or harmful zero, uh, zero day attacks that actually happened maybe in the last year or so? And do me a favor, just like explain it to me like I'm five a little bit. Yeah. Like, what kind of the impacts <laughs> did these actually have on the day-to-day -day operations of businesses? The biggest one, and again, and, and it's hard to classify this as either a zero day or a, or a, or a, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, it's hard to classify solar winds is going to be the biggest deal. Right. Um, but again, it's, it's hard to classify that as a, as a true O day, you know, it, it, it was, but it wasn't someone snuck software in. So it, I don't know if they would really classify that as an O day, but that was one of the biggest issues that happened um during 2021 right so you know solar wind software is used to run the back ends of it infrastructure right so it's on servers it's on your active directory servers it's in your networking equipment it has elevated privileges um it has access to all the things all the goody juiciness that a that a hacker would want right so yeah. the ex the the supply chain exploitation of that can lead you can think of the cascading things that happen because of that and this is my opinion. I have no facts to back what I'm going to say up, unfortunately, but because their facts around this are, are scarce, but realize that those guys had that access for a long time. The average, I mean, those guys, I'm going to say the adversaries, and you can be that who that may, but having access into those systems could give them access to things like source code. The best way to develop a zero day exploit is to have access to source code. Right. If I, if I can look at the source, I can I can use very smart programmers to figure out how to bypass things or where bugs may be and things like that. And then soon after that was that the uh, SolarWinds exploit was discovered, other zero days started to pop out. First one being what's called proxy logon. And I'll explain what that is, too. So a lot of people, a lot of companies still have what's called on premise. So they have a server that sits in their office somewhere that hosts Microsoft Exchange. Microsoft Exchange is an email collaboration platform. It's been around since the you know, late 90s. I love the union use by it. Now it's in Office 365, but a lot of people still have on-premise Exchange servers. So proxy logon was a zero-day exploit that all an adversary had to do was send a special request to that server, that it's just a web server. And then that, with that request, they can then install software, what they call a web shell. Long story short, it's, it's going to give the attacker these hands-on access to that Exchange server. Now, what does Exchange server have access to? Um, every contact in the organization, every email in the organization, everybody's information. It, right? It's a it, that's a huge, huge deal. <clears throat> again, zero day vulnerability. It's a big impact, high impact vulnerability. Um, that again, you're, it's hard to detect. It was a single request that was able to do it. Now, there's other behaviors that you have to look at to be able to detect things like that after it's happened, but you're not going to stop that initial exploit from happening you just didn't know it was there also you had what's called a log for j everybody's heard for log for j right so and i'll, I'll explain that in, in as easy as i can so uh, there's a lot of there's software out there built on the java framework java virtual machines and that was vulnerable to basically sending again sending a single type of request and then getting that kind of remote code execution on anything that was running this log4j software, and that's a lot of stuff. Um, and then when we start, when you start seeing that, it's it's so widespread <clears throat> that people didn't even know. Like you don't, it's not one. It's not like Exchange was easy, right? Are you were running Exchange, yes. Is it on premise? Yes. Okay, I know I need mm -hmm. to patch. Um, log4j, not so much. You don't even know <laughs> what software. There's so many other pieces of software who utilize those libraries. Wow that it's just impossible to know. Um, so you have to you have to monitor for that stuff. You have to look and find out what the way we deal, deal with things like that. We look for indicators of compromise. We get these kind of what they call IOCs. We search for those things. We, we monitor for those things. And when we see those things and we can hunt to try to figure out, okay, is this a, a valid exploit into Log4j or not? Again, but very far reaching, very high impact um, vulnerabilities for that. There's other ones out there. Um, <clears throat> there was one against, and again, I'm not, not bashing the company at all, but uh, everybody has vulnerabilities. It's, it's, you know, it happens, but there was a firewall vendor <clears throat> that had a vulnerability where in their VPN server, all I had to do was um, send a specific request, again, one request to this firewall VPN device. And it would then reply to me with who was logged in, their username, their password in plain text um, wow. and the, and the access level that they had it was bad. 
right? That's, that's, that's a bad vulnerability. Um, again, but if you don't know that's out there and you're not monitoring for odd requests like that, um, you don't know what's happening. And then all of a sudden now as an adversary, I have VPN access into a company that's, that's a kind of putting, basically getting some kind of nefarious device and putting it on someone's network, which when I did red team stuff, that's game over. If I can physically get a device in the network, it's literally game over. There's, there's, it's bad. So you have access into that system now. So, um, you know, <clears throat> things like that, that's, those are the level of things that happen. Those are just the three. And there was literally, again, not all of them have that level of impact. Right. Some of them are, mm -hmm. oh, there's a no day exploit for there's tons of them for the Windows operating system. Right. But there's no exploit for it or they're not exploiting. So, you know, those things happen. But it's those ones that are all, that are exploited in the wild um, that you don't know about and you don't know about until afterwards that are so concerning because now you're playing catch up. Right. Oh, we now we know about it. So it's no longer a zero day. It's a, it's a single day or whatever. We have a patch for it, whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. But now I have to go back and figure out what in my infrastructure is susceptible to that. Has it been exploited already? Do I have adversaries in there? What, what have they gotten into? You know, the whole incident response process that you should be doing as a business. So um, they, they should be taken seriously. And, and it's not going, again, my opinion is it's really not going to get, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. um, that's just, just the way technology is. Thank you.